We are very thankful to yang berbahagia Professor Tan Sri Datu Professor Emeritus Tan Sri Datu Zulkifli Abdul Razak, Rector of the International Islamic University Malaysia, for agreeing to deliver the closing remarks despite his busy schedule. So without further delay, ladies and gentlemen, let us give Tan Sri Zul a big round of applause. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Uh, how do I start? Huh? Uh, I would like not to be formal. I think this is an academic uh, session. Uh, I would like to address you as colleagues, friends, brothers and sisters, uh, for thanking you for staying back. I was told 300 of you attended this whole day program, which to me, from my little experience with ACAP, 300 attending a program is an amazing number. Yeah, often, often we struggle to get 100, 150 people, but 300 and staying on until the end of the end of the program, I think, would be a good indication of how successful this program is. Yeah? I've been asked to give a little bit of uh, closing remarks, but I want to do this uh, not as a rector of IUM. I know this is basically uh, done or carried out by uh, IUM. I want to talk to you as an academician. I want to talk to you as an, an educationist uh, to add on to what I think it is important for me uh, as a person who has been working with academia for a long time to bring things into perspective. Yeah? Uh, we had a session this morning. IUM organized a conference on business and management in the KLCC. And the keynote speaker was Yang Berbahagia Tan Sri Wan Zulkifli. Uh, of Petronas, and so happened that in, her, in his speech, he talked about uh, enterprising leader. So there must be some uh, relevance uh, to what he's talking about. But the perspective that he took, I guess, probably is slightly different from what we are talking about here when I look at the program. It is not so much about bottom lines. To him, it's about creativity. To him, it's about innovation, which, of course, could be translated to, to, to bottom lines. But at the end of the day, I think the spirit of being enterprise is to create more ideas, is to create more you know, platforms for us to expand our minds. And he gave a very classical, classical example, which I think some of you know, which is building a ship and building the whole, uh, what do you call, uh, drilling process or whatever it is on the ship and the ship moves from place to place rather than building it one place and then you know uh, after after drilling and you build another one uh, Petronas has innovated this and apparently this is the first and they just beat Shell by a few weeks apparently so he, he had that kind of idea of Petronas is a fortune 500 countries that has got the capacity to give ideas which is out of the box, which is you know, uh, new, and which is basically novel that other people could follow. So my passion in this particular thing is basically how do universities lead at the end of the day? I don't quite care whether, you know, uh, whether we make the ranking at the point that I'm not a ranking guy, but probably you know that. But I want to see how the university lead, particularly university uh, that works for the public sector, because I think our mandate for the public sector is so huge that we need to bring this leadership into bear as far as education is concerned. And therefore, enterprising mind, enterprising leadership is one of those. But given that, uh, I have got three things that I want to share with you. Basically, the context of what we are talking about. In education, my passion is basically we need to talk about what is the underlying philosophy of education. I mean, if you don't have a philosophy to work on, I think we are all lost. Any institution you go to, Petro Naspon, he was mentioned just now, that if you do not know the philosophy of Petro Nas, then you don't belong to Petro Nas. And in our university, often not, often, you know, we do not understand what is the philosophy of education. And through my interaction through ACAP, when I ask uh, participants, how many of you actually paham falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan? I'll be lucky to have 1% of the audience understand this. 
And therefore, the question that I ask myself, if you do not understand the philosophy of education, what is it they're going to do in an organization that actually do not have direction as far as you're concerned? And therefore, my passion in anything that we do in education, you must contextualize it in the falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan. And the falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan is not new. The falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan has been here for the last 30 years. It was created in 1988. And now we are celebrating, last year we are celebrating the 30th anniversary of falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan. And there's nothing in the mainstream that talks about falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan. And the falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan was also created together with the Rukun Negara. And what is the connection? The Rukun Negara, the first principle talks about kepercayaan kepada Tuhan. And so is falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan. If you read through the, 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 the details of falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan, kesudahannya dia bercakap pendidikan adalah berasaskan kepada ketaatan dan kepatuhan kepada Tuhan. Now we have not put this together. Everybody has forgotten about the Rukun Negara. I'd be happy if anyone can recite the Rukun Negara uh, blindfolded. Yeah? And also we have forgotten about the Falsafah Pendidikan Kebangsaan. And what is more tragic for me, in, 1980, in 1987, UNESCO come out with what they call the four pillars of learning for the 21st century. And if you read that document, and if you read the Falsafah Pendidikan Kebangsaan, there is a synergy between the two. Maknanya, kalau kita ambil Falsafah Pendidikan Kebangsaan itu in its totality, it is already a 21st century document. And it is now recognized by UNESCO in that particular context. We talk about the same elements. We talk about the same uh, you know, uh, outcome. And the outcome for Falsafah Pendidikan Kebangsaan is manusia yang ada kesejahteraan diri. UNESCO talks about what? A complete human person. There can never be a, a good coincidence between the two, and these are done quite independently. In other words, the Falsafah Pendidikan Kebangsaan to me is still relevant now, and we've even shown that it is relevant for the future in the 21st century. And therefore, when we talk about entrepreneurship, enterprising mind, enterprising leadership, where within the Falsafah Pendidikan Kebangsaan can we embed this? Because otherwise it runs on its own, it could be more corporate, more commercial, rather than more intellectual and more academic. I know we need to, be, to, to, to blend this too, but now when we talk about entrepreneurship, I am worried that at the end of the day, our university become a factory rather than an institution of higher learning. That is my worry when we talk about entrepreneurship without the context. And where do you put the context is something that we need to try and understand where the falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan is. Yeah? That's the first thing. That is 30 years ago. And if you project 30 years from now, what are we talking about? We are talking about sustainable development goal. Sustainable development goal was declared in 2016 at United Nation a conference, General Assembly in New York. And they got to, this is a phase that we need to go through from the year 2016 to 2030, and they call it Education 2030. So we have talked about what has passed 30 years ago, and what is the future for the next phase, another 30 years, that will be the Education, of education for Sustainable Development or the Sustainable Development Goals. Again, when you talk about anything for me, how do you connect this to the Sustainable Development Goal? What is Sustainable Development Goal? In a nutshell, I think somebody has mentioned, yeah, it has five elements. How do we synergize living in the planet with the people intact, with shared prosperity, which is now the key words for you know, the, the new government, but working through partnership and ending up in peace. So the five Ps of planet, people, prosperity, partnership and peace. In other words, whatever we do, enterprising or otherwise, this will be the outcome. And where do you contextualize this, but it's smaller in the Falsafah Pendidikan Kebangsaan? We have worked hard for the last one year uh, in IUM to understand this from the Islamic point of view. 
And we think Makasit Asharia is the key to this. So when we talk about sustainable development, the equivalence for us is Makasit Asharia. The five elements of protection of life, intellect, property, lineage, yeah, and also the deen or the beliefs could easily summarize what the 17 goals of sustainable development is all about. And if you take that makasit as part of kepercayaan and kepatuhan kepada Tuhan, I think we got it made. We got it made. And therefore, we can link balik semula what has happened 30 years ago to what's going to happen 30 years from now on. And that's where I think the enterprising mind needs to work, to understand these concepts and to link it so that education remains an education. Education is not a business. Education is not part of politics. And I always refer this to a conference that we had in Bangkok in year 2006, attended by 1,600 1, participants, attended by more than 200 presidents from all over the world. And we craft up what university is all about. I remember the first sentence. They got the university is above politics and business. And we visualize, just like people visualize government, there is legislative, there is judiciary, and there is also executive. Yeah? Bagi kita, the same thing. These three don't mix. Bagi kita pun, the same thing. Business, politics, and academia do not mix. But they depend on one another. They support one another. And one another actually see that the balance is maintained. And that's why when you talk about apolitical, which is now, I think, the, the, the mantra of the new government, the university must be apolitical. We subscribe to it 100%. IUM, I think the new president is here, are going through that phase that there's no politics in the university. Yeah? But we are also very mindful that there cannot be business in the university in the context of you know, business in, in its raw sense. And how do you then balance these three together is something that I think has something to do again with this enterprising mind that we talked about. Yeah? Why is this so important for me? And I'll, this is my last point. What will happen after the year 2030 onwards, in other words, the next 30 years? And this is where we go back to the discussion of the so-called Fourth Industrial Revolution. I don't know whether anybody has spoken about Fourth Industrial Revolution in this particular context. Everybody talks about the fourth industrial revolution, but we have not end up the discussion into what happens 30 years after 2030. In the discussion of the fourth industrial revolution, yang sekarang ini tidak dibincangkan langsung, there is what they call the point of singularity. What does a singularity mean? Singularity is when the artificial intelligence and the human, human intelligence intersect. Yeah. And they cut that intersection will happen probably around the year 2040 or 2030. And at what time the sustainable development goals end? And what happens then? It will create another species called the transhuman. Now, if you were to talk just about ordinarily what we are going into, then suddenly the transhuman appear in the year 2030, you will not know how to react. Who is this transhuman? How does it look like? We do not know. But if you read their discourse on the internet, there's a society called the Transhumanist Society. One person, which is the Bagisaya, the prophet of it, called, called Ray Kurzweil, he wrote a lot of books, and they cut the transhuman is even more powerful than God. It's a very blatant statement. Yeah? And if that is the nature of 4IR, talking about artificial intelligence with respect to human intelligence and creating another species, what is an university at the end of the day? That could be another entrepreneurial mind creating another species called the transhuman. How do you react to this? Yeah. So, for me, this whole meeting of this nature is not just to accept ideas, but to challenge ideas. 
It's just not to say, yes, this is, hap this is happening today, but we want to find out what will happen tomorrow. Because today will not guarantee that it will remain so for the future, particularly when you talk about the future. Yeah? And I think the discussion now is very, very apt when we talk about the 12th Malaysia plan. I think academia, people like us, needs to give a lot of input so that the balance between the 4IR, the Sustainable Development Goal, the Makasit Asharia, and the, you know, the four pillars of learning are all also enshrined in this particular document, not just from the economic point of view. It has to be human-centric at the same time, not only technological-centric. My worry when I attended the, 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 the kick-off conference in, in Marriott, Boba Wini, it's all about economy and it's all about technology. In my session, it was the second last session, when I asked them, where is a human being in this? There's very little answer. Yeah, because the focus is very much on the externality of the human being rather than interne the internality of the human being. The intrinsic of the human being is not even discussed in this particular context. Yeah? So I would, I would like to, to, to just end this by saying that we have, we have made a good start, alhamdulillah. And I'd like to thank my colleagues for this and all of you for participating. But I think this is just the beginning. I hope there'll be more of this under the new leadership of ACAP. But taking this to a level which is very intellectually, you know, awesome and, and rigor, so that we can now crystallize new ideas, moving it forward into what Malaysia ought to be by whatever years we talk about, 2030, 2020, whatever, yeah? that we have got a vision that we protect the human person first rather than anything around that. And my worry is that we have not talked enough about it. We invest so much on artificial intelligence, but how much do we invest on primordial intelligence, which is initially the fitra? Yeah? And the problems that we see today is because of that lack of investment. The question of values, the question of adab, the question of, you know, just behavioral stuff. And we go back then, bagi saya, to the falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan. When we talk about kesejahteraan diri, what does it mean to us? Adakah pelajar-pelajar kita bila keluar dapat ijazah dirinya sejahtera ataupun tidak? That's a question that we should be asking. Rather than will be he be, be employed or not employed? That is a question also. But before that, dirinya sejahtera ataupun tidak? Kalau dirinya tidak sejahtera, dia tidak akan boleh memberi kesejahteraan kepada orang lain. As simple as that. If you don't experience peace, you will never be able to dispense peace. And hence the bully and the sexual harassment and all the things that we read about in the newspapers. It's all, bagi saya, an indication that there's something is not right at the very basis of what education is about within, within Malaysia. And now that we begin the Fasafa Pendidikan Kebangsaan, I think we need to go back and understand this. And that will be the basis, inshallah for us to move forward. Yeah? So on that note, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to interact with you. Although I think you're half tired uh, listening to another, another discussion of this nature. But please bear in mind, this is not the end of the story. There's a long way to go. And if you want to put education in its place, we must have the philosophy to back it up. Nothing will work, from my point of view, if there's no philosophical underpinning, right? And the philosophy is so important because it's a roadmap. It will tell you exactly where you want to go and how you want to take this forward, inshallah. Yeah? So on that note, thank you very much. Wabilahi taufiq wa Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.